Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we've got another meatloaf going here. I think this is number 30. Um, it's amazing how fast they go. 30 weeks. That's, uh, that's quite a bit. Um, so we've got a couple things going. We've got some viewer appreciation mail that we're going to take a look at. A couple packages showed up. So we'll open those up and uh, have a look at uh, what's inside. Um, got out to the flea market. Uh, last weekend was the uh, open house. So I didn't get out and uh, kind of messed up my whole shooting, my video shooting schedule, but we kind of got back on track now. Um, so got out to the flea market and got a couple things, so we'll take a look at that stuff. Um, I was poking around in the drawer the other day and I found a, um, an, a kind of an odd micrometer that I thought we would take a look at. And uh, I'll show that. And the other, oh, uh, uh, honing stones. So we're going to look at some honing stones and uh, how to clean them and care for them. And once again, this is kind of a, uh, a lead in to uh, this chip control thing that Adam and I are working on. And uh, uh, I might even throw a, a couple little teasers in there for you. Um, and the last thing is, oh, I shot some little uh, short segments of video at work uh, with my other camera of a tube that, that we're working on there uh, that's made out of a hard bronze uh, that we're machining the ID and the OD and I had to make a boring bar and do a bunch of stuff so it's kind of kind of an interesting little project and uh, um, so I'll throw some clips of that in there too so let's uh, let's get an apron on and uh, let's get to it Okay, so the first one uh, comes to a, this first viewer appreciation. Um, uh, Mark Bates had a whole bunch of these springs, apparently. I don't know what they're out of, um, but they're big, heavy-duty springs here, um, real big wire diameter. They're 10 inches long, about uh, 250 millimeters, and um, the wire diameter is kind of massive here. It's quarter inch wire, uh, you know, six, 6.3 millimeter wire. Um, maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll measure the spring rate of these things uh, and see what we have. But these might be um, useful for the counterbalance for the, um, um, the big etching press. So here I can just kind of cut these off and, uh, and re-flatten the ends and kind of make up any length that I want. But uh, so anyway, he sent me those. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. And um, um, you know, I don't know what, quite what I'm going to use them for, but uh, this is a kind of a useful geometry and having multiples of the same size is always uh, good. You know, if you just have one, then you know, you're kind of stuck sometimes. Anyway, thank you very much. Okay, so the next thing here is, this is uh, um, a fishtail or a, an arrow or a dart or whatever, a thread grinding um, um, temp template or gauge. Uh, but this is a 55 degree Whitworth. And I bought this off eBay for, I don't know, nine bucks or something like that and a couple bucks to ship it and uh, it showed up. And, you know, it's, it's good. It was... It wasn't satin chrome before, but somebody kind of went a little bit uh, hairball on the uh, on the uh, the sanding and cleaning here, but it's it's still fine. And um, so now I have one of these. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put a little red paint on it. Just just so I don't you know in my constant haste. Uh, kind of grab it and uh, um, anyway this is kind of IDs it a little bit I'll just put a little bit of red paint on there and and that isn't gonna hurt me you know what? this is this is just one of these little paint markers here it's not making it very red okay anyway I'll do the other side too in a second anyway I just wanted to show that um, it does not have the um, uh, some of the other ones have the thread depths on it, so uh, this one doesn't, so.
Okay, next one here comes to us um, from a viewer. And this is from uh, John Hunt. And uh, he really likes the, uh, the hammer collection. And he thought that, uh, that I needed uh, some anvils to go with my... Uh, to go with my hammer collection. Anyway, this is a nice little uh, um, brass anvil. It's cast. It looks like you machined the bottom of it, and uh, and uh, to flatten it up a little bit, and maybe the top even. And uh, so this is one of those ones that you could kind of go over with a file and really just make it really beautiful. But I kind of like the kind of cast look to it. Anyway, uh, uh, so he sent me a little note and. Um, so given your huge hammer collection, your equally large table, I thought you may need something a bit smaller to hammer on. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I've got some small hammers now. And uh, anyway, thanks, John. Actually, let me, uh, I'm just going to pop around the corner here. And uh, I've got a couple of, uh, there's another one that I have that, it's, that somebody sent me that's uh, a little rougher. And now, okay, so take a look at that. Look at those proportions there. Now... You can see this one is more nicely proportioned here, and this one is kind of uh, a little bit oddly proportioned uh, for for a similar size anvil. Now this one's been doinked on the end. It looks like somebody was using it for a hammer, maybe or something. Uh, um, but it's got a nice patina on it also. So there's a little one there, and uh, I think that's it for little anvils. Um, and you guys have seen. I think I've showed this before. This is this is the one I made a long time ago, made out of a piece of railroad track. So, um, but uh, that was basically cutting torch, grinding, and uh, a little bit of milling on top. So, anyway. Okay, so let's. Let's take a look at some uh, flea market finds today. So uh, it was kind of a, I'd call it a wimpy flea market today. Um, it, it's Mother's Day today, so, uh, and I didn't realize that, but uh, we pretty quickly figured that out. So uh, uh, I almost got skunked, uh, literally. And, oops, I have to bring it over. But uh, um, so, but we did get a couple of things. And uh, so let's show those. Let's show this one first. Um, this I saw sitting there, and this is somebody's one, two, three block project. There wasn't a pair, unfortunately. And it's got some kind of uh, rough surface grinding on it. And actually, this side's still milled. I don't think they quite got to finishing it up. Um, and that was my impression when I looked at it. So I said, well, okay, maybe I'll send this to Stan, and he can, uh, he can tune it up for me and, uh, and make it nice. Uh, and I'll just have a block that's slightly undersized. Well, as it turns out, I think I was right in that um, it's oversized by about 12 thousandths that way and 12 thousandths that way and 12 thousandths, well, 12 thousandths this way. So we can make a really nice one, two, three block here, or Stan can. <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send that to my buddy Stan down there in Southern Cal. Uh, and I got something else to send him anyway. Um, so that will work out real nice. And then maybe he can uh, uh, have some fun uh, practicing um, um, getting this square, parallel, and to size, which is no small task, um, um, on his, uh, his nice little surface grinder he's got down there. I don't have a surface grinder yet. Uh, I do, but it's not here yet. And um, so that'll be some uh, upcoming stuff. So anyway, that's going to go down to stand. So when I was saying that uh, I almost got skunked at the flea market, um, so I don't know. I only found one thing, and we and we got to the very last row, and then I found some other stuff. But um, for that whole time, I was carrying this thing here, and um, and I'll show you how we how we might use this. Uh, well, how I've used these in the past. Now this is a 
it's a poop scooper is what it is. Um, so you have a little tray, you know, and you get your dog and you go out in the yard and you, anyway, you scoop up the business, right? Um, but these also make excellent chip rakes and uh, for cleaning out your chip pan on, on bigger machines. And uh, sometimes the chips collect around the coolant, uh, the coolant uh, drain and you gotta clean them off or, you know, you just don't want to touch all that stuff with your hands, right? Because they're sharp chips and you can just kind of rake them up and then scoop them out of one corner. And I'll, I'll demo that because my chip pan and my lathe's kind of kind of full right now. So anyway, I walked around the whole damn flea market with this thing uh, um, going, wow, I hope, I hope I find something else. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a long trip for uh, one little thing. Well, I got some of these. And these are always handy here. A guy had a big stack of these. And I got some, you know, you guys have seen that one. Um, and uh, it's kind of a lighter color. Um, you know, I've been fiddling around with exposure issues with my camera a little bit. And uh, so I've, I got some darker colors. So let's uh, put some stuff on there um, and maybe uh, evaluate um, how these different colors look. Um, you know, on camera. So, uh, and you know, I'll look at the video when I uh, start working on it and see which one kind of looks good. And because uh, these lighter colors tend to blow out the exposure on the camera, which is uh, uh, a little bit of a problem for the viewers. That would be you guys. So, anyway, these are a dollar piece. They're really nice because they're hemmed, and um, um, and you know, they get mucked up, and you just you know get get another one right and. You know, you guys have seen this one for a while. This one's been around the shop for a while, um, and it's still in pretty good shape, so uh, um, they last a while. Anyway, these are kind of nice. All right, so... The next, actually, uh, I should probably show all this together. Let's put it all together here. So we got a couple of a couple of C clamps, and we got some some pliers, and then actually the uh, this this block was part of that same lot. So this was not this stuff here. Um, this was one lot here from a guy, and this was this was the last row. You know about. 10 stalls from uh, going back out the gate uh, of the flea market and uh, picked this up. Um, these are some nice four inch uh, Armstrong C clamps. And uh, you know, they got somebody's initials welded in them. Okay, I can deal with that. that that's, to me, that's a shop patina there. What I look for is I look for the condition of the screws. Okay, a couple things. So you look, you look at these, right? And if these are bent, you know, where somebody's putting a little pipe on there and torquing on them, or these are bent, um, no, it's a no fly. And then obviously you wanna make sure your swivel pads are in pretty good shape. These look excellent. Um, they're a little bit dirty, we'll clean them up a little bit. And uh, this has got uh, M, whatever, uh, whoever M was. Oh, this is a proto, I, I thought they were both uh, um, Armstrongs, but uh, that's a proto. Oh, look, they're very similar. Anyway, swivel's in good shape. This is not bent, and the screw uh, is uh, nicely intact. So, um, so got those. And you know, C clamps, smallish C clamps like this, super handy. Uh, you know, um, I pick them up whenever. I'll lug them around. Okay, so the as part, and I'll tell you what I paid for this whole lot here in just a second. But then um, he had a pair of these, uh, this is what caught my eye here. You see that? And I've shown this before. These are Crowders, um, Crowder pliers. And I think it's a New York company. And they just did some just wonderful forge tools and uh, this kind of Art Deco uh, gripping surface and nicely forged crisp edges here. These are, these have been used a bit. Uh, they're not bad. Um, these still close up nice, and um, I'll probably wire brush these jaws a little bit. They're very fine serrations in there, which is kind of cool. Um, anyway, they're just nice kind of lineman pliers there. Um, and interestingly, I don't know if you can see this, but this is fairly small, okay? So 
um, what, am, what am I saying there? A lot of them, you know, when they're, when they're closed, the grip is larger. So, you know, your hand is not as powerful out here as it is down in close like this, right? So if you're nipping off wires or, or clamping in the jaws and you want to maintain a good grip on it, you know, um, having this closed just a little bit smaller is just very nice. And these are noticeably a little bit small. And it's, you know, it's probably only, the difference is probably only that much, right? Right, but it's but it's noticeable and kind of nice. Okay. Anyway, those are Crowder uh, thirteen eighty one eight. Eight's probably the uh, eight's probably the overall. What do we think? Yeah. Okay. Eight's the overall. That's two hundred millimeters. Um, anyway, those are nice. Um, then this, I used to have one of these and I lost it or loaned it to somebody and I uh, haven't been able to find it. And um, um, this is a little diamond adjustable wrench here. And I recognize, the, and you can barely see it through the rubber grip here, um, but this is what they call a super wide here. And we'll open that up and you'll see that that thing opens up like crazy. That is almost an inch, or maybe it is an inch. Uh, close to an inch, 960, okay. Um, anyway, uh, I had one like this and uh, anyway, it went missing or whatever and this is a good keep it in your car uh, adjustable wrench because it covers such a big range and it fits into fits into little places. So, and I have a bunch of these, so that's a good one. Um, and then the last one from this guy are these uh, uh, diagonal cutters here. And I looked at them and, and what I saw was I saw this. I saw the dot grip there, okay? Now, I can't read any marks on this. Um, they're, they're high quality, okay, just looking at them. And uh, I believe that they are blue point or snap-on, looking at these, this dotted gripping surface. They sell a line that does not have vinyl grips on it. Some guys don't like the vinyl grips uh, because they get, they get all snotty looking like that. And uh, so some guys just like bare bare things. And normally they're marked right around the pivot, but uh, I, I can't read anything. I, I should get my magnifier. Oh, you know what? Maybe there is a, maybe there is a little something there. Let me grab that magnifier. You know, you don't take your magnifier to the, uh, to the flea market there. Yeah, there's something there, but I just can't can't make anything out. Anyway, it doesn't really matter that much. They're they're nice uh, diagonal pliers, and I believe they're snap-on, um, and it's a good size actually. So it's not the full size, but it's not the minis either. So uh, anyway, 15 bucks for this whole pile here, which was uh, pretty good. Um, you know, I would I would have paid 15 bucks for the two C clamps uh, pretty easily. You throw in the rest of this stuff, and um, it's a, kind of a bonus. Anyway, like I said, this is going to go down to Stan uh, and uh, have a trip at the uh, the grinding spa down there in Southern California, and um, I'll make a good video for Stan too because he'll get to he'll get to practice grinding six sides like that um, and getting them all square and uh, parallel in the sides. That'll be a, that'll be a good little video series for uh, Master Stan. Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just show a little bit of uh, the cleaning process here. Uh, I don't I don't like to use uh, power tools to uh, do any of the cleaning on stuff like this. I want to go a little slower than that and um, um, not give it the the uh, I've been uh, I've been to the power uh, uh, <laughs> wire brush uh, wheel. So I I saved my old. Uh, TIG welding um, uh, stainless brushes when they get contaminated uh, I just throw them in a pile and uh, and uh, they work good for getting some of these uh, nooks and crannies uh, cleared out right without uh, giving it the uh, the super power brush look um, 
you know, some of this is uh, is history here, right? You know, this patina that's on some of these things, but I just want to get the crud off. And then any, any dirt and whatnot. And this is just uh, the Starrett M1. Uh, it's a it's kind of a solvent and uh, it's got some lubricant in it, which is kind of nice. Okay, so we'll get these, get those jaws. Line out. Anyway, I think you guys get the idea. Yeah, this cleaned up pretty good. Like I said, I don't, I don't go too hairball on this. Uh, this kind of stuff doesn't have to be factory new condition, and uh, uh, I want that kind of older, older. You know that darkening like that. It's just wonderful, right? It's uh, it's some of the history of this tool, and it kind of helps represent its age. But you know, toolbox crud uh, can certainly go away. Without hurting anything. You know, like this little paint spot here. I think I'm gonna leave that actually, I kinda like it. Yeah. Alright, I'll let that sit. It's already behaving better. touch up those edges a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. Let's look at this thing again here. I still can't see a name on it, but... All right, anyway, that's kind of, uh, I just wanted to show a minute or so of that, and uh, um, yeah, it's cleaning up real nice. Actually, I might peel that off. It's kind of, kind of ratty. Okay. Oh, actually, here, let's... Uh, Lube the screw here and the swivel. Okay, and then we'll let those sit. Let those sit for a little while. So here's this uh, micrometer I wanted to show you guys, and it's still in its original box, uh, and it says uh, uh, Edelon, Switzerland, and there's the micrometer, and it's seen better days, but uh, I never looked in there. What is that? Uh, huh. All right. Anyway, uh, this is actually a very interesting configuration here. Um, it's, it's very rapid movement, as you can see. Okay. And you see immediately that the, the scale here only reads hundred thousandths uh, increments, okay? Well, that's because it has a larger diameter barrel here, okay? And this larger diameter barrel reads all the way around. So it reads a hundred thousandths, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. It's got some little corrosion there, 90, 100. So one turn of this is a hundred thousandths. So this is what I would call a direct reading. You don't have to do any uh, addition um, to set, say, eight, 800 thousandths or 835 thousandths, right? Or 853 thousandths, et cetera. Um, to, uh, so you basically read it directly off of the barrel, right? There's no um, 25 thousandths increments and then interpolating in between. Uh, let me, I'm going to grab another mic here and uh, just to illustrate. So here's, here's the old school one here, okay? And so you got 100 thousandths and then it's divided up into 25 thousandths increments. So one turn of the barrel is 25. Well, one turn of this barrel is 100. So if we want that same 835, right? So there's 800 
plus 25 plus 10, right? That's 835, right? Well, here we're, uh, let's go to 835, just because we're using that number. Here, okay, 835. So it reads direct. Anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, you don't see them very often. Um, and this one's got carbide faces, and, um, and it's got a friction thimble here, which is kind of nice. It's a, big, it's a big diameter here, and you can get your hand on it. It's not way up here. I always like the, um, this style here that's, that's close, right? Because my hands, my, my, even though my paws are kind of big, they don't reach up well to get the, uh, the little ratchet out at the end, okay? So there it is. Um, Oh, okay, it's called a Micro Rapid. Uh, hey, I, never, I didn't notice that before. And I don't remember where I got it. I might have got this at the uh, well, the flea market. And it's Edelon ET. Well, I'll put it on the screen for you. This is a one inch. Yeah, you see them every once in a while. But uh, just thought I'd show that. Uh, it's kind of neat. And uh, I might trot it out and use it a little more than, uh, than I normally do. So. Okay, so here's the uh, the repurposed uh, poop scooper in action here. Kind of pull all that stuff to one end without getting your hands in there. And now I'll kind of scoop this out into a into a trash bin. But you know, you can. Uh, a lot of times you just need to pull it back from the headstock. Um, you know, there's always a danger of snagging a chip and, and hooking the, the pile that's in the, uh, that's in the chip pan and pulling it up around the spindle. I think everybody's experienced that one time or another, but, uh, anyway, it's lightweight, it's cheap, and, uh, um, it's, uh, repurposed, uh, now it's a lathe poop scooper, right? <laughs> okay, so here's a, here's a selection of, um, of sharpening sticks and stones, sticks and stones. Um, these are uh, Norton, uh, just abrasive oil stones here, or sticks. That one's pretty polluted. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is, uh, and that's a hard Arkansas made by, uh, looks like Norton also. Is this a Norton? Hey, it looks like they're all Norton except for this one here, which is a DMT. Um, this is a diamond, uh, a diamond impregnated uh, sharpening deal. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of recondition some of these here. Let's, uh, um, but this would be, let's do this one here first. This would be kind of typical. This has seen some use, uh, honing tool bits and uh, things like that. Um, but, you know, you need to clean them every once in a while and um, so that they continue to cut. And what I do is I seize a little bit of the magic sauce here and uh, you give it a good rub and a lot of it just comes off, okay? And you can see that this is coming off there just from that. But sometimes you get some embedded crud in there that doesn't want to come out. Okay, and then this exposes uh, the abrasive again, which is kind of nice, and uh, let's just work our way around here. You know, this is important because we're going to be talking about uh, tool bit honing when we get to the uh, chip control thing here. Okay, so, you know, this is almost looking looking brand new there. Let's turn that around so you guys can read that. All right, so. Things are brightening up here for this one. So that's probably all this one really needs here. Um, just to kind of be rejuvenated and cleaned up, okay? All right, so I call that one uh, pretty good. 
Um, but let's, let's take a look at this one here. This one's <laughs> seen some heavy use. Let's see if we can do anything. And I'm, you know, I'm just using my bare fingers here. This one's got some embedded junk in it. Okay, yeah, this one's a little, uh, been a while since it's been to uh, have a spa treatment here. Waxing and um, and uh, cucumbers in the eyes uh, <laughs> treatment or whatever. This one's pretty credited up. And you, you know, you can let them soak a little bit, but they tend to, you know, they're they're slightly porous and they will absorb um, WD-40 or thin solvents and uh, things like that. Okay, so what I wanted to show though. Maybe I should have <laughs> picked one of the other ones there. Because this one is taking a little while to, uh, to get cleaned up. Well, here's what I wanted to show. Is if you need to, uh, to actually abrade these a little bit to, to clean them up. And you see there's some, some little embedded little bits of aluminum or something there. You know, you can pick those out gingerly. You know, you don't want to create... And this is carbide tipped here. Yeah, I know, we're, you know, using the wrong tool here, but it's hard. And I can resharpen it, so I'm not too, too worried about it. So I can kind of go after those, uh, those little bits of embedded foreign material there. Okay. Now the other thing I can do is with this guy here, since diamond is the total kick, kick rear end uh, abrasive of the universe, is I can I can kind of flatten them off, and you can see that it's it's pulling up, it's taking off some of the material there. You know, diamond wins pretty much in uh, in all circumstances. So I'm doing a couple of things. I'm truing, and I'm cleaning, and I'm flattening. And this, you know, these are readily available. Um, this one was uh, in my uh, scuba diving kit, and it got kind of corroded. It got some seawater on it or whatever. I touched, used it for touching up my uh, my fillet knives and stuff when I used to scuba dive a lot. And um, anyway, I just pulled it out and I said, oh, okay, well, let's, uh, let's put that out where we can use it. All right, so I think you're getting the idea here. And, you know, you got to clear them out. I don't think I, yeah, I, don't think I have a coarse one of those. The coarse ones of these are quite coarse. Maybe I had to get one actually, because uh, that would probably be great for this kind of stuff. Anyway, I think you get the idea there, right? So here's a. This is a hard Arkansas here. I don't want to scrub that label off here, but let's uh, let's take a look at this side here. Looks like it could use a little bit of help there. This is a flea market find here. Let's give it a little rub. See what the see what the rub does. All right, a little bit. All right, let's give it a little, little diamond action there. And these, uh, these like to have a little bit of water or uh, lubricant on the on the diamond. And you can see that's cleaning that right up nicely. And I'm just holding it down flat. Now that, that looks like 
discoloration in the uh, in the actual stone there itself. Anyway, I think you guys are probably that one's got a big chip in it. Um, getting the getting the general idea there of how you can uh, you can use diamond to recondition or clean even uh, some of your abrasive sticks. So uh, this one will probably clean up real nice. Yeah, I'm not going to do that one. But you want to use a kind of a lightweight lube. Um, to float the stuff out. Okay, anyway, thought you guys might like that. Condition, reconditioning uh, abrasive stones uh, uh, and keeping them going. And if you keep these flat, if you keep these flat and nice and you don't let them get a belly in them, uh, um, they just keep lasting and lasting and lasting. Usually the fate of these is you drop them and they break in half. So that's uh, typically their demise is that way. Welcome back Ox Tools, I'm Tom. So today, oops, start over, cut.